Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and I have been taking a little bit of a hiatus from these lectures because they are pretty tricky sometimes to, to make. So this lecture here, I actually had to do a little bit of animation or, you know, claymation or whatever to make this thing work. And um, it was a bit of a process. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about how I did it and, and if it uh, really resonated, w resonated with you. And um, yeah, this was an interesting lecture to make. Um, it's taken me a minute to film it. I've run through it a bunch of times and, you know, to see if, if, if the message that I'm trying to share with you guys is going to resonate. And hopefully you like it because uh, it was a pretty interesting and, and, and a little bit challenging um, lecture to make. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. And let's get started. So the lecture today is about something I call the gas tank. And the gas tank is your physical conditioning as well as what is happening in your mind um, during these uh, this motion and this and this activity that we call jujitsu. So first, let's first discuss JV Jiu Jitsu Online is up and ready to go. Lots of chapters. We are starting with a few programs, JVOS and the JVOS mindset that is up and ready for purchase on jvjujitsuonline.com. Also, we have JV Basics. It's a great course. A lot of great contact content. If you are a beginner, go ahead and check out that course. Course designed for newer students. JV TV. Each chapter at the moment is independently marked for a monthly subscription. The entire library has over 700 videos. The complete library will be available very soon. So I'm excited about JV TV. So now let's talk about the gas tank. So this is a visual representation of what I am experiencing in my mind. So let's, let's take a look at this. So let's first discuss energy over time and how this works. So as time moves forward, more and more of your energy is consumed. You must find a way to replenish your energy to sustain a pace. Each breath regulation also refreshes your thinking patterns. What most people don't understand is that the air that you breathe helps you think clearly in order to make logical decisions. I think that the fact that people don't coordinate their breathing with their jujitsu makes their decision making a little bit challenging or you tend to get caught in the same kinds of patterns with no way out where when you're looking at things through a present state of mind you're able to see obvious choices that you should be making so by keeping your mental thinking uh, clear it helps you make obvious decisions that you would not normally make if under stress or under panic situations. Failing to regulate will lead to exhaustion. If you can't catch your breath and somebody's putting a pace on, you will eventually exhaust. You will accept and exhaust or exhaust and then accept. I mean, one or the other, however you want to look at it. At some point, you need to, while your breath is elevated and you're moving, you need to be able to be present and be able to breathe and take the breaths that you need throughout the motion. So your mind has to split into whatever the jujitsu activity is and then regulating your breathing at the same time. But what you don't realize is that by regulating your breathing, it allows you to, to do the physical as well. It, it's, a, it's a bit of a separation. It takes a little bit of practice, but eventually um, you'll, you'll end up getting it and being regulated while you're rolling kind of changes the experience. High, ener high energy exertions. These deplete the gas tank very quickly. Hard bridges, long scrambles, right? So it takes chunks out of your gas tank to have these depletions. The longer the exertion, the more gas tank is depleted. The more your gas tank is depleted. So if you're exerting at like a high energy over a long period of time, 
it's going to take that's taking huge chunks of oxygen out of the system and it's going to force your body to start to to rapidly increase the breath and if you if you're holding it long enough it starts to mess with your decision making regulation is done in two phases phase 1 is catching the breath slowing the breath down right so you're breathing you're breathing a lot and you're able to calm yourself down, calm your breath down, regulate, life is good. And secondly, regulating the breath actually regulates your mind. By being able to control your breath, you are able to control your perspective. You're able to see things more. You're able to feel things more. You're able to see the obvious things because you're in a, such a calm state of mind. And that is done by regulating the breath. So the regulation breath. So when positional stability is achieved or a tether is reached, right? So let's say, for example, you are passing the person's guard, exhausted. The guy just put you back in. You're trying to pass the guard again. And you finally pass after a long scramble, hug the neck, hug the arm. <sighs> Even though you might still be breathing heavy. That first breath clears out the lungs and you're able to kind of gain your thoughts again because all you could think about was clearing that breath. So if you're thinking about clearing that breath and catching that breath and not thinking about other things, your focus is not on what's going on on the outside. So by being able to clear that breath and knowing when to clear it, when generally for me, a lily pad or a bunker, I call them lily pads or bunkers. They're little, sta they're little stabilizing positions that I have sprinkled throughout every, every circumstance, every position you can get to, you can get to a lily pad or a bunker and just chill out. Now, when you get to a lily pad or a bunker, depends whether you get to a lily pad or whether you get to a bunker depends on your mindset. It's what you're thinking when you get to the mindset. A bunker. You get to a bunker. Okay, I can take my breath, catch my breath here. I'm going to open up my map. I'm going to see that you're able to kind of, the war is going on around you, but you feel like, okay, I'm in a good place. Nothing's going to happen here. I can relax. I can regulate. A buoy, you are exhausted. You are scrambling. And you are trying to get to some sort of a stabilizing point. Side mount, hug the neck, hug the arm. A great stabilizing position. Oh my God, thank God. You're able to just hang on to the guy for a second. Right? You mount, hooks in, hug the neck. And you're, you're like stable. Oh my God, the person. I've been able to. Depending. If you're exhausted when you get to a stabilizing point, I consider that a buoy. You're in the middle of the ocean. You're floating. You're just trying to get to whatever you can get to. Just to hang on so you can take a breath because you're exhausted. A bunker, you're going in a little bit more strategically sound. Okay, I know I'm getting there. Boom. Your, your mindset is a little bit more controlled and present. A buoy, it's more desperate. When positional stability or a tether is reached, clearing the lungs is required. You have to do it in order to, to, to regulate your breath, to uh, clear your mind. A regulation breath is exhaled. You start to regain your oxygen. Presence is regained. Oh, my goodness. Oh, life is better. So let's talk about energy zones. The green zone, you are fresh. You're just shook hands with your partner. You started sparring. You're sustainable. Your second, your second zone is your sustainability zone. You're able to kind of roll. Maybe it's with a teen or maybe it's with um, somebody that you're just a little bit better than. You're just kind of, you can roll forever. Like it's a sustainable pace. You're you have a comfortable breath. You can do it forever. Zone three you need to regulate. Regulation is needed. You feel that your that your breathing has uh, has increased, and you need to um, catch your breath. And then we have the red zone, zone four, exhaustion. And um, obviously, we're trying to avoid the exhaustion zone. And if we do get to the exhaustion zone, we're trying to back up into the regulation zone and slowly walk our way backwards. Breathing zone, zone one is your normal breathing. Zone two is your regulated breathing. Zone three is your elevated breathing. 
And zone four is your panic breathing. Expending energy. You only have a limited amount of, en of total energy. You want a smooth and sustainable pace. Long scrambles are not sustainable. That is very important to understand. Long scrambles are not sustainable. Max effort cannot be sustained. Transitioning from bunker to bunker is most effective to regulate your breath. Predictability helps with breath regulation and energy consumption. Bunkers and buoys help breath regulation. Setting a sustainable pace is key to energy management. Making an opponent work harder while you are regulated generates fatigue. This is how you do it, people. The main tank is how much total energy you have available. Efficiency is key for longevity. Fatigues affects your decisions. As time progresses, energy diminishes. Breath regulation to maintain and replenish. The gas tank affects your decisions and your decisions affect your gas tank. Long energy explosions deplete the main tank quicker. A sustainable pace must be achieved. Keep explosions to short calculated bursts. And finally, avoid long wild scrambles. That was my presentation on the gas tank. Guys, let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you guys thought about the animations. Click and subscribe down below. If you really love my content, go ahead and click the notification bell so you will be notified when I release these lectures. Guys, if you like my content, go ahead and click like and subscribe down below. If you really like my content, go ahead and click the notification bell so you will be notified of all of my upcoming lectures. Don't forget, check out jvtvjujitsuonline.com. The link will be in the description for all of my upcoming content. Till the next time, see you soon.